So hi everyone, it's Julia. And in today's video, we're gonna be discussing Dance Moms part three. Again, it's been a while. I know I've been gone for a while, but life so yeah um so i wanted to give a bit more of an explanation basically i'm in grad school as i've said before i'm a communication student and i'm taking classes through the summer i also still work and i'm also self-teaching myself a new skill um this is hopefully for a career i hope to have after graduation um i'll go more in depth in another video probably on a community post but yeah that's just got a lot going on and also if you see my hair like I know I have a lot of new growth. I feel like I look a little scruffy in this video, but I'm gonna get my hair done. And yeah, so <laughs> thanks for watching. Back to the video. I'm gonna be discussing Kalani, Bryn, Jojo, Asia, and Cameron in this part because I feel like these girls were obviously the most impactful additions to the team and they stayed with the team for majority of the series or at least for their respective seasons and so as for the other girls like the mini team and the select team i don't really care season eight don't really care um yeah they were great dancers and everything like that like i'm not knocking any of their talent but i just feel like they none of them made like a big enough impact on the show to like really talk like a lot of them were really just there for drama and fodder um i think for a part four i want to talk about eliana and liliana because <sighs> the exploitation but um i want to talk about them but as for other parts um let me know what else you'd want me to talk about with this show because after talking about the main girls and the moms what else is there to talk about let me know what else you want to hear about and i'll see what i can do so the first mom and daughter pair i'm going to be discussing are kira and kalani and i'm going to get deeper into kira right now so basically kira is kalani's mother and kira just didn't give a crap about this show kira didn't want to be there she clearly made it very clear <laughs> she made it very clear that she only wanted to be there because of kalani because kalani wanted to be there and um the times that she did stir up drama she was really explosive like she was really ridiculous honestly i have to say kira was pretty awful a lot of the time she mocked jojo's speech impediment and then when she got called out on it she wanted to sit here and act like she didn't do none of that your kid told every single one of these kids that she called a clothing person and said i'm at the aldc this week send me a package of clothes no free for free, free and oh i got these for free and i got these for free and i got these for free you know what she also made fun of ava that she looked like a praying mantis and then she just attacked Sarah Reasons, which was um, a girl on the select team in season four. She attacked Sarah and Tracy and basically was trying to say, oh, you'll never win in Arizona. You suck, blah, 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 blah. Saying this basically right in front of like a 12, 13 year old child. It was really ridiculous. And Hold on, Tracy, let, how many titles has Sarah won? None, none, none. That is not a Maddie. She can't even win in Arizona. How is she gonna win here? And the venom that kira had for tracy was kind of weird i was like yo the only reason why you'd be this amped and this like defensive towards someone is if they had something on you like whether if they had information on you or if you you know like she was just way too defensive for no reason so Tracy kind of spilled the beans that Kira didn't really take care of Kalani and she was arrested for credit card fraud and I thought this moment was so funny because Kira tried to act like that didn't happen and I'm just like it's public record like we caught you in 4k <laughs> like it's in 4k like this is 4k how did they get you in 4k that ain't me literally this is public record you can look it up her name was kira salazar that was her maiden name and like so i don't know i thought that was funny that she denied it i'm like if you move past you might as well just own it whatever and for all y'all sensitive little, little people out there i'm not trying to shame kira for her past i just thought it was funny that she didn't own up to it you know when it was she's a star like it's out there like you might as well just own up to it you know but i get that she was in an uncomfortable situation so i guess you can't blame her but it was just funny. So like I said, I didn't really like Kira much. I felt like she was really rude and I felt like she was just, she just had a lot of venom. Um, however, I will say what I appreciated about Kira was the fact that she didn't sweat Kalani. She knew that Kalani was talented and she knew that Kalani was a great dancer and the best dancer on the team. And so she wasn't out here trying to shove that in everyone's face. I think she was kind of like that in the beginning, but I think once she learned how Abby was in regards to that and how Maddie was the golden child, she kind of dialed back. But it's like she knew and Kalani knew that they were 
that they were the best. And so I kind of like that about her, that she let Kalani's talent speak for herself. That's something I have to commend Kira on. But other than that, she went out of line a lot of the time and she was called out for not being the, start, the sharpest tool in the box um, throughout the show. So she's saying she didn't know what overzealous meant. And Ashley accused her of not knowing what, no, Ashley basically said that Kira didn't know that pathetical isn't a word, but pathetical is a word. Pathetical, an adjective evoking or expressing pity, sympathy, or distressingly inadequate. It is the archaic version of pathetic. So pathetical is a word. <laughs> Kira also stated that the show was awful to her once she had her baby and that she was antagonized for literally going on maternity leave, which I didn't like. I thought that was really unfair because it's like she's having a child. Like what kind of woman doesn't go on maternity leave when they have their own child and they were attacking her for it. And I felt like it just looked really not compassionate because all these mothers have had children. So it, it just was so weird to me. No, they were awful. Like, literally awful. The moms like, or the crew? Oh, all of them. Oh, God. Like, it was like, oh, we're just going to really drill on her right now. <laughs> and they're like, you left your child. I'm like, I, no kidding. I just had a baby. Yeah. And they're like, oh, no, but you left your child. And that's the uh... thing that people don't know. I'll never forget Holly being like, I went to work as a principal. And I'm like, yeah, and I'm sure you took your maternity leave too. Right, <laughs> like, right. Um, I'm getting nothing. And oh, by the way, Miss Melissa, you offered to have Kalani with you. Oh, <laughs> see, I wasn't there during any of that. So I don't know. So Melissa offered to have Kalani and then it was turned against you that you left Kalani? Yes, yeah. it's exactly what happened. It was like- That sounds familiar. Melissa was like, you know, because Melissa's like the mom, like- I'll take anyone and everything. And um, everyone was like, oh my gosh, you're like letting Kalani stay with Melissa. Oh my gosh, all the stress that Melissa's going through. I'm just like, Kalani's a 15-year-old child. I'm um, girl, like teenager by that point. Like she was a 15-year-old. Like you can take care of yourself. You know when to take a shower. You know when you're hungry. You know when you're this. You know, like you're not like four or five years old where you need like around the clock, like around the clock, you know, um, supervision. By 15, you know better. So Yeah. So next we're gonna go into Kalani and I really liked Kalani when the show first, like when she first came on and it was only because she was the eldest, we had the same birthday. So I'm two years older than her. And so for some reason I was like, oh my gosh, she's older. She's the oldest one and she's my age. I felt like I could relate to her, whatever, whatever. So that's kind of why I liked Kalani. So Kalani was adored by Abby, like adored. I mean, in one episode, Kalani didn't have a proper costume and Kira didn't care. She was like, whatever. And the moms were really upset that Kalani didn't have a proper costume. But um, Abby was like, well, when you look like Kalani, you can wear anything. I understand why Kalani is here without a costume. The thing is, is Kira doesn't care, she's so Abby doesn't care. Doesn't care. I know. Well, no, when you look like Kalani, you can just wear whatever. So basically, like, Abby just thought Kalani was gorgeous. She repeatedly commented on Kalani's looks and loved her dancing. And it was also said in season seven by Stacy that Abby wanted to be Kalani. She literally wanted to be Kalani. I don't know if the new moms understand, like, the level of how much Abby loves Kalani. Like, I sat next to her one day that she was watching Kalani solo, and she was like... Don't you just want to be her? I was just going to say, Abby I mean, wants to be Kalani. She wants to be Kalani. She can slither around on the floor looking so feminine. Her legs look good. Her feet look good. Kalani's just smooth. I find this very interesting and I find it really crazy because to be honest i feel like abby liked kalani more than maddie i know that's probably a really unpopular opinion but here's why i have a feeling that abby it was different i feel like abby loved the success that maddie had abby loved the accolades abby loved the fame that maddie brought her abby loved saying that's my student blah 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 but i feel like for kalani she just liked Kalani. Like, I feel like she just loved Kalani and I think she vicariously lived through Kalani. You know, her looks, her dancing ability. And so I feel like Abby just genuinely just wanted to be Kalani versus with Maddie, it was like, this kid is so famous and this kid is gonna get me so many opportunities. Like, I feel like it was in that dynamic. I mean, again, that's probably an unpopular opinion, especially since 
Abby never put Maddie and Kalani against each other. And when they, when she did, Kalani never got comparable choreography to Maddie. So I guess you can argue that Abby liked Maddie more, but I don't know. I feel like Abby loved Kalani more as a person. I don't, I don't know. All right, so let me re-explain this. So I basically feel that Kalani personified everything Abby wanted to be. Because there was even an episode in season six where Abby came for Maddie's teeth. Like she basically insinuated that Maddie didn't have nice teeth. Um, and so I kind of feel like, again, Maddie was like her meal ticket, but Kalani was like the one she wanted to be like, you know, like, yeah. So that, that's, so I feel like you're going to put your meal ticket ahead of who you want to be because your meal ticket's your meal ticket. You get what I mean? All right. I hope y'all get it. <laughs> so again, Kalani was really adored. Kalani was, an, was a beautiful dancer, had very gorgeous lines, and she was very graceful and elegant when she danced, and that caught a lot of people's eye. And she was clearly the leader of the group by the time Maddie left in season seven, or she really was the leader like the whole time, if we wanna be honest, just not recognized by Abby. One thing I do wanna say though, is I wonder what was said in season five with that blow up or um, Kira was like, oh my gosh, like, go to hell, Abby, blah, 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 and had that huge fight. I wonder what that was about, because I still haven't been able to find out why Kira got so mad at Abby in season five. If any of you know what the real reason was, let me know. I've heard that it was because of um, Kalani's weight, but then I heard that was debunked by Kira, so I don't know if we truly know why she just got pissed off that day. I really want to know, so let me know in the comments if you know. And lastly, Kalani has caught a lot of heat in recent months due to her support of Donald Trump. All I gotta say is she chose violence. Like, why would you expose yourself like that knowing how the climate was politically last year and still is? This country is clearly very, very, very divided. <sighs> Gosh, so why would you choose violence is all I gotta say. She chose violence. So I guess she's just an influencer now. I don't know, but that's Kalani. So the next mom we're going to discuss is Ashley. So Ashley is Bryn's mom and Ashley was basically the opposite of Kira because she was super cocky about Bryn's talent and this kind of annoyed me because I'm just like yo your kid is talented. Your kid is like the second best. Just your kid's the salutatorian of the team. Like just you know just 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 stop trying to argue. That was my frustration with Ashley and I feel like she tried to rub it in everyone's faces but what I will say is I think a lot of the moms were very threatened by Brynn. I think a lot of the moms were jealous. I think a lot of the moms had a lot of venom towards them. So I don't think Ashley deserved a lot of what she got, but I do think she provoked people. But quite honestly, the provoking was just because people like Jill were just so threatened. I mean, in season six, episode one, you could, you kept, Kendall was in the interview going like, oh, you know, like someone just comes in after I've been here for so long and they're just going to get my spot. And I'm just like, why are y'all so threatened? It kind of bugs me that Bryn just waltzes in and she gets a solo handed to her. I mean, we've been here for six whole years and she's been here for 10 minutes and already got a solo. The Why y'all so threatened? Why? You know, so I think it was in response to a lot of the, uh, to Jill and Jess especially, but I still also feel like she provoked things. So it was kind of a 50-50 thing from my perspective, but I don't believe she deserved a lot of what she got, if that makes any sense. So with Brynn, let's get into Brynn. Brynn makes me really sad because I feel like the fandom to this day still doesn't really like Brynn. And quite honestly, I thought Brynn was like super cute and sweet. Maybe it's because I used to watch Kalani Addy, which was um, Kalani and her ex-best friend Addison Moffitt's YouTube channel and Bryn was on there and Bryn just seems so cute and innocent. I don't know, like I always looked at Bryn as like adorable. I, mm, she mm, she just seems like a little baby to me. Like that, that's how I looked at her. And I feel like a lot of people came for her for no reason at all. So yeah, Bryn was groomed in season six to be the next Maddie. And Bryn was pressured to be the leader of the team, which like I said in my last part, I don't like it when you try to push kids to be leaders. Yes, kids should have leadership qualities. Absolutely foster traits in them yes but don't try to push someone to the front if that's just not their style like some people are better suited for the role of leader so and i think it depends on the situation like in some situations you'll be a leader some situations you'll be more of a follower i guess you know what i mean and i feel like Bryn was also one of the youngest on the team and i'm not gonna i'm not trying to emphasize on age too much 
But I just feel like in terms of experience, Kalani was a lot more experienced than Bryn and even Nia to an extent. I feel like Nia and Kalani had more of that leadership, take everyone under their wing sort of personalities. They were just a lot better at that. And I wish Abby had pushed Nia or Kalani because I think that would have been interesting to see Abby try to almost like nurture their leadership skills. I think it would have been really interesting if Kalani being the leader was more emphasized, if you know what I mean. So again, Bryn had really long lines and was had a very delicate way of dancing and Abby absolutely adored her. Bryn was the target of a lot of drama. Jill attacked Bryn relentlessly, telling Bryn she don't got no- Very, very fair point that Abby made that why can't Kendall just open her own mouth? Again, I know this was a long time ago and they've all probably moved past this, but my thing is this, it's like if Kendall really had a problem, Kendall would say, hey, can you move out of the way? Everyone does that. You know, when someone's in your way, you just casually say, hey, you're in my way. Uh, scoot off to the side a bit. Like, it did, like, obviously you could tell Jill just made that comment out of jealousy. She was feeling threatened because Kendall Solo possibly was going to be taken away. So I think her feeling threatened caused her to act that way. Because that was just too much. Like, it was such a frivolous thing to get angry over. And it just goes to show how jealous and threatened she was at the time of Bryn. It's crazy trying to say that oh just saying that Bryn can't act and I mean even when she was crying during rehearsal they came in there and they were attacking her they're like you know that we're rehearsing the group right the group is rehearsing blah 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 blah, blah. I'm like what I'm like can y'all mind your own business okay how many times have your kids stormed out of the room and cried how many times how many times has Kendall stormed out the room to cry and get angry and get frustrated your kids are allowed to be emotional, but Bryn can't be. So after Kendall yelled at Ashley, a lot of fans went after Bryn for insinuating that Kendall was a brat. And I gotta be honest, I understood why Kendall yelled at Ashley, but I also kind of feel like Bryn was only 13 back then. And honestly, if a mom or if a kid is gonna yell in your parents' face, of course you're gonna get defensive. Like. Of course you're gonna be, because that's your that's your mom, you know what I mean? Like her mom may have been in the wrong for all the provoking, but I feel like you're gonna feel protective over your parents when people attack them. So at the end of the day, I was tired of people trying to say, oh my gosh, like Bran is such a brat for saying Kendall's a brat. I'm like, I'm like, yo, leave her alone. That's her mom. And you don't know how you'd react to that situation. They were already in a very high stress environment anyway. So stop trying to come for like a 13 year old girl for being emotional because her friend attacked or yelled at her mother like come on anyone would feel some type of way even if even if your mom was in the wrong i would still feel some type of way so next we're gonna get into jesseline jesseline siwa is the mother of jojo siwa and she appeared on season five of dance moms with jojo so there's a lot to say about jess and jojo honestly i feel like a whole video could be made about them but quite honestly i don't feel like it at the moment but um basically i'm just going to get into how they were on the show jess is known as the ultimate stage mom saying that she would have done anything to make jojo famous citing that she knew as soon as jojo was born that she was going to be a dancer and like it how early did she get that it performance is, bug it is definitely in her blood like oh. i knew the moment i was having a girl she was going to be a dancer and she was going to wear bows and tutus and she was going to like it so Jess was obviously very, very insistent on pushing Jojo in the spotlight. And Jess and Jojo were meant to replace Chloe and Christy after that huge fallout Christy had with Abby at the end of season four. And so basically, again, I found Jess pretty hard to digest at some times. Jess, digest. Oh my gosh, that rhymed. My attention span was decreasing by this point. <laughs> I found her kind of hard to digest because sometimes she was right and i was with her and then other times i was against her it's like she was hot and she was lukewarm all right i'm gonna spit you out like she was so lukewarm like i like there were times where i like was like yes jess you're right and then other times i was like jess shut so yeah like i was saying about jess i feel like at times she was in the right but then other times she just drove me crazy and she was just so rude to bryn and so i just can't I just can't get behind her after the way she treated that girl. Like the way Bryn was done wrong in that show, it makes my blood boil and it's just the epitome of jealousy. It's like, I don't care if you had to stir up drama. You could stir up drama without like directly going after a kid. Like it was just, it was just too much. So Jess gets a one out of 10 from me. I don't know. Like she can go up there with Kira cause they were just insufferable to watch at times, but she did have her good moments. So I'll give her that. 
All right, so let's get into Jojo. Jojo, 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 Jojo. You can't stand here and cry. I love no, 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 no crying children. Not. Well, if you yell at me, I'm gonna cry. Get out. Go. What a firecracker, man. Like, honestly, Jojo's a firecracker. I think that's the best way to describe her, at least the way she was on the show. I feel like she's chilled out a little bit now because she's an adult. But when she was a kid, she was something else. She was something else, okay? I actually thought that Jojo was a breath of fresh air when I first watched the show because she wasn't so quiet. Like, I feel like up until season... Oh my gosh. I loved Jojo because I felt like she was such a breath of fresh air. Um, I felt like she wasn't afraid to just speak up for herself. And I feel like up until that point, I feel like a lot of the girls were very quiet. I feel like Jojo almost like started something i mean nia started to be very outspoken at the end of season four but i feel like jojo almost like was kind of like an unspoken catalyst for the girls to start speaking up for themselves more she was very again vocal outspoken and this annoyed the girls and abby my face like stuff like that i think jojo is crazy and nuts and she talks a lot and that's really difficult because she's always just loud and always giving her own opinion when sometimes we don't really need her opinion. I just want to put that spot on the team. So Jojo had a very fiery, sassy, and crazy energy on stage that none of the other girls had. And Abby even said that Maddie doesn't have this quality. And so I think, again, Jojo was just such a, you know, just such a fun firecracker type person, had a lot of energy, wanted to get it out in any way possible. And I think she was very creative. I feel like Jojo was creative with her dances. I don't know how to explain it. Like she really knew how to make the choreography her own. And it was like, okay, you're gonna teach this to me, but I'm gonna put my own spin on it. She was never afraid to put her own flair on stuff. Even taking her alias, her character, Paul La, to do a group dance, which I thought was really cute. Um, it's just cool that she was just able to kind of, her. I feel like her brain was just on so many different <laughs> levels and spaces and it was just really fun to watch her. I mean, yeah, she was bratty at times, of course, because she was like 11, 12. But, you know, I think she's learned. So, yeah. Again, I don't like how Dance Moms tried to make JoJo look bad, though. I mean, for example, that scene where all the girls had to talk about all of JoJo's positive and negative traits right in front of her. Like, I feel like this scene made Nia look annoying because Nia was like, you take opportunities from people who've been here longer. And it's like, how is that even JoJo's fault? Like, what are you talking about, ma'am? Like, ma'am, she couldn't control that. So I didn't like that. But I think that was a producer controlled scenario because that was just too much. And then there was also the segment in Ireland where the girls were making fun of Jojo and her speech impediment and things like that. And the moms were like, oh, there was no malicious intent. There was no malicious intent, blah, 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 blah. And I just, I don't know. I think she went through a lot on that show. So her becoming who she was, who she is now, I think is just like a catalyst of dealing with um, being on a show like Dance Moms, you know, where your light was dimmed. And that's the thing, like, I think she had a lot of confidence. And so I'm gonna go on like a quick little tangent about confidence. Basically what I feel is that when you have a really confident kid, it's important to steward that properly, to guide that properly. When you have a kid that's really outspoken, really confident in themselves, it's your job as a parent to guide that, to make sure that their head doesn't get too big, to make sure that they're, they're still humble and kind to people and that they acknowledge that I'm not better than anyone, but I don't need to compare myself to anyone. I'm still me, I'm great, and I'm great as I am. And I feel like that was where Jess went wrong with Jojo at times, because I feel like Jojo came off as really obnoxious and Jess was just okay with it. And it's like, no, that's what happens when you don't properly tend to your kids' talents. I, I mean, I'm talking like I would know, but I mean, just that's just from my observations in life that when you have a talent or when you're an outspoken person or when you have a certain trait and it's not treated properly it'll manifest as bad things so i just think that jess could have been better at managing jojo's confidence and her outspokenness but again it seems like she's calmed down because it's been a while and she's an adult now so yeah so yeah abby was just really cruel to jojo trying to tell her like oh she's greedy claiming that her dad doesn't make enough money so because some kid wants to make a quick buck on the weekend because daddy doesn't earn enough money, that's not really a master instructor. 
I'll be back. And I'm just like, what is wrong with you? Like Abby was just terrible to her, but now Abby's buddy buddy with the C was because now Jojo is like a literal like mega star and like a millionaire, billionaire, whatever you want to call it. And I feel like Abby only wants to be close to Jojo because of Jojo's fame and because of Jojo's popularity and money. I really think that's probably one of the only reasons why. And I would just advise, I mean, not like she's going to watch this, but I feel like I would just advise Jojo and her family just to, you know, be watchful, especially when you're, people are leeches and Abby just strikes me as a leech. So yeah. Right, so next mother we're going to be talking about is Christy Ray. So Christy Ray was actually my favorite temporary mom on the show. Um, she was crazy in Raising Asia. I mean, honestly, Raising Asia made me like not like her at all. But in Dance Moms particularly, in Dance Moms, I liked her. Basically, I feel like Christy was the most prepared for showbiz compared to the other moms because Christy clearly wasn't like a average housewife or house mother like the rest of them. She was in the business. She was a bodybuilder, I think a model before. So she knew how the business worked. She was very, just very, I think, level headed. Like she didn't really care about like where Abby was. If Abby wasn't around, she's like, oh, that's not, that's none of your business if Abby wasn't around. She always put the moms in their place and she knew that they all felt threatened by Asia and her talent. So she never hesitated to clock them when they were wrong. There was one instance though, that I found really weird with Holly, where Holly kind of attacked i don't want to say attacked but she kind of came against christy for saying like oh you think that asia is everyone knows who asia is and christy was like yeah asia's talented people know her name and i think holly took that as if you're trying to say like oh you think asia's better than everyone else but i don't think so again i feel like a lot of these moms just had confidence in their children and they instilled that confidence in their daughters and i feel like a lot of the original moms were threatened at times by that again i think i think there were times where she went a little off the wall like i think times where she was really extra and she would always she would try to threaten and fight the moms i think there were those were annoying times but again for the most part i think christy was pretty level-headed and i think christy um knew that asia did well like asia's like my child does well she does well in the groups and the solos she deserves more solos and i get it that it's hard that when you've dedicated your time blood sweat and tears into a show and you're part of the reason why the show is so successful in the first place i can understand why how frustrating it can be to not get a solo but at the end of the day i think the dance world is just about who's the best of the best not oh you've been here longer oh because of your tenure tenure helps but not all the time so i don't know that's like my long spiel on christy ray um again she was crazy in raising asia she was a crazy crazy stage mom and she was was really out of line so but at least for dance on specifically i think she was decent so let's get into asia monet ray so asia is christy's daughter and even though christy had her extra and ridiculous moments i really liked asia i thought asia was so cool for a, like a seven-year-old she was super fiery and spunky and she kind of reminds me of jojo except she was like she was more fierce and less boisterous. So Asia was really brought in there to shake Mackenzie up and she definitely did. And Asia frequently won her solos and at times was given special parts in the group dance. And so she, again, she was there to challenge Mackenzie. And Mackenzie was very threatened by Asia because Asia won all the time and Asia was the favorite. And I really liked how tough Asia was as well. And I like how she took ownership and responsibility when she did things wrong. Asia, you did an entire routine with your pants on backwards. But don't laugh, it's not funny. Now I want the name of who put that costume on you backwards. I did. It was my responsibility. Thank you, Asia. I also feel like Asia was just really confident. And again, my spiel on confidence. I just really love, I really love that about Asia. I loved how she was literally seven years old, but just was like, no one's gonna knock me down. No one's gonna this. Oh, I did this wrong. Oh, the, you know, like she was very, just very strong. And I really liked that. Are you gonna continue to be invincible, unbeatable? Or is some kid from somewhere gonna show up and knock the wind out of your sails? Someone's gonna knock the wind out of my sails. Confident answer. 
So she did do a recent interview, spoke in a recent article about how her experience on dance songs was mostly a positive one. And she said that she already knew what to expect because she had already dealt with years of gymnastic coaches and dance teachers being tough on her. So she wasn't really phased by Abby's toughness. And so, for example, if her knees were bent on her, or her feet were sickled, she remarked that she didn't feel the need to cry about it, but she also acknowledged that other people take criticism in different ways. And she has nothing but love and respect for all the girls and for the show. And she said that she wished that the hard work they put into their routines was showcased more on the show, but that she's grateful where the show has brought her. And so my thing again is I can definitely see, I feel like in some ways, I feel like some people will take Asia's words out of context. I think Asia, again, was just very tough kid. And I think she was able to take criticism very well. And she was very, she just had very thick skin, whereas not everyone is like that. And so Abby definitely was, she was definitely like really terrible to a lot of the kids. But I think at the end of the day, I feel like Abby wasn't as bad to Asia. I feel like had Asia stayed, it probably would have gotten a lot worse for her. But I feel like for the most part, um, from her experience, Abby was just a tough teacher but she definitely was really out of line at times. And so, I don't know, I really like what Asia had to say, but I also don't want people to think that Asia's just like, oh, well, Abby's just tough. Like, I don't want people to think that Asia's dismissing how Abby is. I don't think that's what she wanted to do, but I think it was just her interpretation of her experience, you know? All right, so lastly, we're gonna be discussing Camille and Cameron. So Camille Bridges came onto the show with her daughter Cameron in season seven, and Camille and Cameron were really like the second like true black mother daughter that was on the show besides like Nakaya and um, Kaya like but they were like actually on the team and I liked Camille I feel like for the most part there really wasn't much about her she kind of stayed in the back in a way and I mean she did speak up for Cameron and she was she was funny at times <laughs> you know what I'm saying she had funny one-liners but for the most part I feel like you know she kind of just stayed in the back but Cameron did say that Camille went through a lot behind the scenes Camille lost a lot of weight being on the show. Point where my mom got so skinny on that show because she never ate, because her anxiety was that bad that she wouldn't eat. And because it was such a stressful environment for her. And so it was just a lot for them behind the scenes. So getting into Cameron, Cameron was a really great dancer in season seven, and she was kind of brought to make the team look more mature and look more like, you know, cohesive. And I feel like she was a really great dancer, but again, she didn't get enough shine. I felt like Cameron was such a good dancer, but they didn't really show it. I love watching her in hip hop. She posts her um, hip hop videos and I sometimes watch them and I really like them. And Cameron remarked that Dance Miles was one of the best and worst experiences of her life. And she gave it a five out of 10 in a, in a YouTube video she made about two years ago about her experience. She talked about how that one scene where everyone was going crazy saying that Cameron didn't want to be here and that she didn't like them. Apparently that was something that Bryn told her mother and it was taken out of context or something like that and it was made into a whole big thing but that was really frustrating to me because it's like you're 14 years old and you've been in one area your entire life then you get uprooted and have to go on a show into a group of people that are already established like once you it's really hard to break into a group of people that already have such strong bonds i think that's really hard that's really hard to do to get in a group with people that already are very strongly bonded. I know what that feels like and it sucks. I feel like, you know, Cameron was probably just feeling left out, missed her friends, she missed her homecoming, she missed like all these fun events for her freshman year of high school. And so she was feeling kind of sad and missing those experiences, which there's nothing wrong with that. And so I hate how the moms made such a big blow up of that issue. And then again, she said that her and Bryn had fallout. Again, I don't wanna get too deep into that. I don't really, you know, um, but basically Bryn and her were really great friends but then because of the one risque burlesque dance that the girls did Bryn liked a comment saying that the girls look it was just a whole mess Cameron also said that um her and Kalani never spoke like her and Kalani like barely spoke she said that her and Kendall really didn't like each other and it was obvious there's actually a video on Nia's channel that I'm gonna play right here on Nia's channel like Cameron and Kendall you could tell that there was tension between the two of them s'more and i'm eating s'more ice cream how that is not funny at all <laughs> if you no, throw that at my don't camera throw my snapple. stop with the 
You just threw a pillow at my face. That's a pillow, that's not a drink. Okay, well you chucked it. And so, yeah, and then she said that really her only like real good friend was Nia, but then they fell out after the Irreplaceables tour because um, Cameron didn't tell, or Nia didn't tell Cameron about the tour. So that was kind of a whole big thing and they kind of fell out, but they're building their friendship again. And so, yeah, I feel really bad for Cameron. I feel like she was really given the short end of the stick and I felt like she was not showcased enough. And then not to mention the racism. Oh my gosh. <laughs> like, yo, the racism on the show, like Cameron even said that apparently Abby was saying that her feet looked weird on the Marley and it was like, she's black like horrible one time she told me that the bottom of my feet looked weird because like the top of my feet were brown and the bottom were white and none of the other people's were like that and she was like it looks weird on the marley and i'm just like i'm sorry i'm black what the heck like cameron went through a lot with that all this other stuff and so really like cameron had a crazy experience but I'm really happy that she's dancing today. Like if you go on her Instagram, she's like trying to be a professional dancer. She's very, very talented. And I think she really handled her time on the show very well considering the environment she was in. So yeah, um, that's basically my rundown of all the other girls and everything with Dance Moms. Um, please let me know what kind of topics you'd like me to talk about in a part four. I think I wanna discuss Liliana and Eliana in part four, but maybe in part five we can, we'll see what we I can do. So yeah, um, thank you all so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it and I'll see y'all next time. Peace.